So if you've been anywhere near the Genshin or Honkai community recently, you've seen that things have kind of blown up. And in my last video, I said I wasn't going to make a video on any of this drama kind of stuff between creators, but I kind of have to now because this has gotten so big. So pretty much in this video, I'm just going to be covering everything that's kind of gone on between Atsu, Braxophone, Tectone, Enviosity, and so many more creators that have been all involved in this big argument slash you know drama and yeah i'm just gonna be shortening it down and kind of adding everything together because there is a lot of like text and writing i mean just look at this there is a 11 page google docs so i mean there is a lot of people who probably just don't want to read this so pretty much if you want to track where this drama first started it would be on zarx's tweet i mean he hasn't really been involved in the drama since but this is where it all began and I'm sure he's just looking at this like what the hell have I just started because this kind of started the whole drama with the Genshin 4.4 awards and if you don't know what happened in that then I've made a ton of videos on that too which you can go back and watch but in short it's pretty much people not being happy with Genshin with their rewards and the overall state of the game and for the next couple days tons of people were talking about this and saying hey we need to like boycott the game or do something to you know tell whoever else we want better rewards but this kind of just spiraled into to something completely different. So, so as you may know, Tectone has been very, very vocal on the whole situation with the Genshin Rewards, as he should be. But not only was he criticizing Hoyaverse, he was also criticizing a lot of Hoyaverse creators as well, including creators like Enviosity and Atsu. And at this point, it's just kind of random remarks on stream, and it's nothing massive. It shouldn't really start any drama. You're just commenting on someone. And then all of a sudden, Braxophone, who is a big content creator for Genshin Impact and Honkai Star, making a ton of really, really useful guides, he's pretty respected in the community he made this tweet which just says about Atsu and he says please tell me what I did or move on and this stirred up the entire fan base including Tectone who found out that Atsu had done even more stuff that he did not know about and as you can see there are still tons of people looking at this document right now there's over 95 total viewers looking at a uh, Google Doc so pretty much he has a TLDR here and it says Atsu hates me and I don't know why Atsu spreads hate of me to other creators and industry professionals I don't know why Atsu uses people to climb the social ladder while calling everyone who's not in his circle ladder climbers. Atsu is coming after me and my friends in the open now and I'm just tired of it and I just want to be left alone and not have my career tampered with. So pretty much in this whole document he goes on to explain how he feels left out by Atsu and his whole group of friends and the Braxphone in this document says that he is very socially awkward and that you know he thought that it was maybe just him like overthinking it or something and you know it wasn't anything big. So then he decided to go and ask Atsu whether, you know, there was a problem with him or something. And then Atsu replied and pretty much said straight to his face that he wants to keep him at an arm's length because he doesn't know him really well and that he feels uncomfortable with how eager he is to befriend him, which is a little bit weird. I mean, you know, if you want to make friends in the space, then you've got to be eager. I mean, you can't just be like, hey, you want to be friends or like, or no, it's fine if not kind of thing. I mean, you, you have to be eager if you want to make friends, especially in the content creator space, because they're not going to come running to you. But yeah, this picture here is one of the main sources of all the drama as well, which is, as you can see here, it's uh, Atsu and his group of friends. You've got Toronto, we've got Dish, we've got some other creators, which are all friends of him. And... Then we have Braxophone, who's in the background over here. And if we look at this tweet right here, it shows the post that Atsu actually uploaded later on. And it's completely different. He's edited out uh, Braxophone, and I think this is a VTuber in front of him that's being covered up. And he's completely edited them out. And he did go on to say that these two were edited out just because all of these people were going to this con, which, you know, makes sense, I guess because they added just this VTuber who was also going. And I guess that kind of makes sense. But what doesn't make sense is the fact that he asked for a picture afterwards with just these people and, and not Braxophone, which as you could expect, wouldn't make you feel very good at all. And I just couldn't imagine how he felt whenever, you know, you just have to stand there really awkwardly while the others take a picture without you because they didn't want you in it, which is so, so weird. Then Braxphone goes on to say it's not just the isolation from his friend group, but also Hoyverse themselves. Apparently, Atsu actually has a really, really big say in what Hoyaverse does with the creators. To the point where he can actually blacklist creators, which is way too much power for one guy. And I don't think he's even the biggest YouTuber or streamer in the Genshin space, which is so weird. And so there should be really a change with Hoyaverse as well on how they handle with creators. And it seems like Atsu has just been kind of telling the bigger creators and more of his friends to come rather than maybe giving some of the smaller creators a chance to, you know, go to events and dinners and whatever that Genshin provides. So obviously this is really, really not looking good for Atsu and we go further down and it just keeps getting worse. Pretty much, Braxphone found out that when talking to some of his like YouTuber and content creator friends, 
they were actually told by Atsu to avoid him, including Tectone. He told Tectone, the guy who, he doesn't really listen to anyone, he forms his own opinions quite a lot, he told him to avoid him, and he thinks that he, he could get away with it. So yeah, he's been telling people to avoid Rex phone when he hasn't really done anything wrong. He just got a bad vibe from him. Imagine like making up this whole thing just because you got a bad vibe from someone. It's so, so crazy. I don't, I don't know why this is even happening. And also that he apparently has been calling a ton of people and also just Braxophone a ladder climber for trying to be friends with bigger creators because apparently you're always a ladder climber if you want to be friends with a bigger creator and not just because, you know, they seem like a nice person. But the funny thing is here, he's actually provided proof of him doing exactly the same. You can see his view account here is around, you know, 100k, 200k, around that. Whereas whenever he involves other creators, like again, Toronto Dish and whoever, they've gone up to like a million. So. It seems like he is being a ladder climber, which obviously at some points there's no problem to it. If you want to have a nice video of a big creator, then, you know, that's great. As long as the other creator knows that they're in it because, you know, it will get more views, then that's fine. But it seems like he's just calling people out for being quote unquote ladder climbers when he's one himself. So he shouldn't really be shaming them. But he did reply to this all with a tweet, which is now deleted. I had to pull up my reply to this, which actually did very, very good. We got GTA content creator drama before GTA 6. And yeah, he's deleted the tweet now. He did post another tweet saying that he's deleted it. And pretty much here, he said that he went on a stream of Asmongold, which I did watch a little bit of. And pretty much he talked with Mtashed and also Tactone a bit on the stream. And he came to the conclusion that he was dragging way too many people into this drama, including his own wife, which is kind of messed up. I mean, you know, I he, he mentioned his wife in the picture and that you've, you've literally just brought her into this whole mess, which, you know, I don't think she deserves to be a part of. But yeah, pretty much the end to this whole Atsu drama is that he's deleted all of his tweets and just gone back on what he says. So I think it's really evident on who's right in this situation. And yeah, it's, it's actually ridiculous the past few days what has gone on and what has been said and what we found out about Atsu and how much of a not so nice guy he is compared to, you know, what he appears to be, because he appears to be Quite a nice guy, but clearly not. And obviously with Braxphone, I wanted to go all support him because he seems like a very, very good content creator. Seems like a very, very nice person and makes some amazing guides and also just videos on YouTube. And obviously he doesn't deserve any of this from Atsu. And yeah, I hope this drama has found him some more support and some more followers because there's got to be something good coming out of this. Because really, there's nothing good coming out of it for both sides. You know, both of them are going to be hurt in some way. But hopefully... You know, he gets a little bit of a lift up from some of the views and, you know, followers he can get and build an even better audience. And honestly, that's the only, you know, positive we can take out of this. And pretty much, I was thinking about this earlier and I don't like to make references like this often, but this is pretty much the Shabu incident of the, uh, the Genshin Impact community. I mean, we've already got this large hole in the Genshin map at the moment. And now all of our favorite content creators are dying off. It's like it's like all the main characters in the Shibuya instant arc just dying off. And yeah, you just replace them with the content creators. So yeah, that's that's a good analogy of uh, what's going on at the moment. But there is still one more thing going on, and this doesn't as much involve Atsu. And instead, this involves Enviosity, who I did mention a bit at the start. And yeah, he's been going after Tecto mainly. And he's just been kind of losing it. I'll be real, you know that one annoying baby on like a, an airplane flight or a bus or whatever that's in the background just crying? That's Enviosity right now. He's he's in the background just crying away and we're all focused on what's going on with Atsu and Braxophone and he's just there going, oh, Tecto said this about me. So yeah, uh, but it seems like he is going after his ex-wife, uh, which isn't great, and his ex-marriage uh, so that isn't a good thing to do. He made a whole thing about his trauma with Tectone, which is a little bit insane, where, yeah, he brought up his ex-marriage, which is just not a thing you do. You've just kind of lost everyone the moment you do that. But pretty much he said that he's had a control on his life and that he's had PTSD from it. I, I don't think 
he's actually i don't think he mentioned anywhere here that he actually got a, an official diagnosis for ptsd so before making a claim like that i would definitely have it medically diagnosed before saying you have ptsd because people use that word way too lightly for the people like imagine someone with actual ptsd from like from like war or just some really bad moment in their life and you're using this word just super lightly uh, and for a video game as well a, a gacha game of all of that i don't think you should really be using that kind of terminology to uh, describe but maybe maybe you do have full-blown PTSD from Tectone saying bad things about you but I can't believe it at the moment do you give us an actual medical like diagnosis for this because you haven't mentioned it anywhere in this tweet and yeah you pretty much just said that you had a panic attack one time which you know and everyone has panic attacks every now and again and it's not necessarily due to PTSD like you just had a panic attack for you know thinking about a past moment just because i've had a panic attack because you know i thought about something doesn't mean i have ptsd it just means you know i had a panic attack if you really think you got it then you know go get it tested i i hope you're okay but i really don't think you do pretty much the tldr this is i don't like tech tone <laughs> that's that's it it's like oh oh really oh Oh, I didn't know that. And that apparently he's free now. <laughs> I bet he's reading every single reply. He says, your words hold no value anymore. I bet he's here like two seconds after he's posted the tweet going, hmm, yeah, let's, uh, oh, Tecto implied. Oh, 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 what did he say? What did he say? What did he say? <laughs> Reading through it all. So yeah, this is pretty much the crying baby in the back of an airplane situation. And I'm sure this will just fizzle out now because of all the other dramas over and he can't really farm this anymore. I mean, you know, maybe he can farm some more stuff with Tectone, but it wouldn't be a wise decision because, you know, at the end of the day, you've you've kind of done a lot of wrong. So, yeah. And the whole reason why Enviosity is really in this situation in the first place is because of Atsu, and you should just really stop, you know, defending him now because he's obviously admitted wrong by deleting all of his tweets and stuff, so you should probably just back down as well. But yeah, that's pretty much all the Genshin drama in one without actually reading through all the paragraphs. This is kind of like a, you know, quick fire way to understand everything that's going on with just all the creators and also we're gonna end on this uh, tweet from Asmund Gold which says man I really need to start playing Genshin Impact which he did post a couple years ago as well I think he really enjoys the drama at the moment because he did do that stream and it'd be quite funny to see him play the game and kind of interact with him in the community so maybe we'll see that in the future that's kind of a light note to uh, you know end on if you enjoyed this video then don't forget to leave a like and subscribe and I'll see you in the next one that's all see ya